Well, hello and welcome to this pre-recorded webinar. My name is Mohammed Ismail uh, from Shift Accounting, and today we are going to talk about lost production recovery plan. I have Jamie Emson from Henry Schein Edmonton office uh, with me today. Well, Jamie, how are you doing? Good, Mohammed. How are you doing, man? Good, good. Well, thank you for taking the time to do this with me. You know what, Jamie? This is one of my favorite topics because we're going to be talking about numbers and more numbers, and then we're gonna take these numbers and turn them into action. So I love this topic. <laughs> Me too, man. No, I'm happy to be a part of it. Thank you for the invite. Awesome. So um, what are we gonna talk about today is, number one, uh, a quick overview of the past few months. Uh, revisit 2020 targets, because you know, obviously, you know, the, when we started the year, the plan was completely different. And we are going to do a deep dive into the practice uh, recovery planner tool. Okay, so when we look at the last few months, I mean, you know, the year started really good. Uh, most offices did really well uh, January and February. And then COVID hit, uh, March took a hit, and then virtually there was no production for um, April and, and, and possibly May, okay? But here's the thing, you know, a lot of offices really did well in cutting their costs. So they offloaded, you know, uh, their staff. They possibly, you know, uh, were able to defer rent. All their major expenses were put in pause. So they did really well from, you know, kind of preserving cash, right? Um, you know, a lot of offices, when they started coming back, they most likely used the way subsidy, you know, the government loan. There's a possible possibility of, you know, pandemic insurance. So a lot of offices were, you know, well-funded, have liquidity, able to minimize the, their cost. But what happened is there's a missed production for, you know, April, May, you know, also June was maybe probably a, a, a slow start, right? So the question is, how do we get back to, you know, our 2020 goal, right? How do we achieve it? Uh, you know, I don't want to think about the, you know, kind of almost like lost production that is not recover recoverable. You know, a lot of people argue that um, dental production is not lost, is just, you know, being pushed uh, down the road, right? Because the argument is, you know, if somebody ha it is, is, is in pain, they still need to come see the dentist. Uh, maybe hygiene production, not so much, but we both can agree that time is lost. Do you agree with me, Jamie? Absolutely. No question. Right. So then the question is, how do we recover, uh, you know, that lost production at least in the next five to six months? You know, is there any tools or things that we can do uh, to, to recover that? Right. So let's take a, you know, a sample budget. Okay. So, when we look at a sample budget, let's say this is for, you know, from January to December, okay? So as I said, you know, this, in this example, we have an office that produced, you know, 200,000 in February, in January, 200,000 in February. March, they took a hit. Uh, they only produced 20, uh, 75. Uh, April and May, they had no production. And then June, they had 75,000 in production. So when you look at, you know, the actual data for the last six months, and then let's forecast what the next, um, you know, six months would look like, we have uh, a total production for this office of $1.7 million, right? So this is what the plan is for this office without looking at any missed production, right? So the missed production here in this scenario is well, we have 125,000 in March that was missed, and then entire April 200,000, and then entire May 200,000, and then June was a soft start, so another $125,000 missed. So we have a total missed opportunity or missed revenue of $650,000. Okay, so I mean, look. Nobody anticipated this. Um, if if this office just continues on the on this plan, which is to produce two hundred thousand dollars a month uh, until the end of the year, I think it's a good plan, right? But how can we take a good plan and make it great, 
right, Jamie? That's right. That's right. <laughs> so, okay. Well, we have one hundred and sixty, um, uh, one hundred six hundred and fifty thousand dollars of missed production. So, what do we do? I mean, if we think about, uh, I just want to reclaim maybe ten percent of that, or twenty five percent, or forty percent, or sixty percent. You know, I, I I highlighted the numbers here. You know, on the side of the screen. You know, and, and if we say that we want to recover 25%, uh, that's 162,000 that we need to add in top of our regular target of 200,000, right? So, Jamie, which number should we pick, you know, to continue with this example? What, what do you think is more realistic? Well, I think we should go for the gusto. I think we should go for that 60%, see if we can get 60% of that number back. Okay, I like that. You know, I I I I like that. And and you know what, you know, for for fun of this exercise, we are going to continue with this exercise. Okay, so so just to you know set up um, you know this exercise again, this office lost six hundred and fifty thousand dollars in production during COVID. Okay, the plan for this office is obviously to get back to normal. Their normal was two hundred. Okay, so. The plan is to achieve that normal, but we are going to take this one step further and show how this office can achieve uh, full recovery, right? So if we pause here, you know, I mean, you know, every office, in my opinion, should have, you know, uh, a, a, an accountant or a bookkeeper that can present the data this way, right? And if we stop at this, you know, at, at, at this, we say, okay, we want to recover 60%, um, you know, or 100% of the missed production. I mean, that, that's a big number, right? You know, let, let's say, okay, I have missed 650,000 uh, in, in 2020. And if we stop there without taking any further action, that is not a plan, right? That is not a plan. Uh, you know, we need to we take this and break it down into actionable steps, steps that we can do every day, every week, every month to achieve this number, right? So I wanna you know, uh, highlight the, uh, the planner tool that Henry Schein uh, provided, okay? And in my opinion, it's a really good tool to take this number that you got from your bookkeeper or your, your accountant um, you know, on what was the missed production for your target of 2020, and take that number and plug it into this planner to see how we can, you know, recover that entire amount, maybe within five to six months to eight months. Okay. Jamie, why don't you uh, show us the planner? Sounds good. Okay. If you can just throw the uh, host thing over to me, Mohammed, and then I'll go ahead and share my screen. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so um, here you go. Thank you. Okay, so as you mentioned, uh, at Henry Shine, we built a practice recovery planner and the goal behind this was to sort of monetize what was lost and or deferred during COVID, as well as come up with actionable items like you mentioned that we can do weekly, monthly, uh, yearly to make sure that we don't only recover from that loss, but we also come out of it and become more efficient as an operation. Um, we borrowed this planner from our U.S. division, and then we uh, we did a lot of work making it sort of Canadianized. So there's been a lot of vetting to make sure that you know any scenario we want to run through here, any particular practice, we can we can sort of monetize what was lost and come up with a great recovery plan. So for the purposes of the exercise just to stay with your budget, Mohammed, about the $650,000 lost is we just sort of pre-populated some of these fields. But I will highlight that these are all customizable to each individual person's situation. So for the purposes of this exercise, we had a closure date of March 18th. Uh, this particular doctor decided that they wanna take another two weeks off by the end of the year just for some vacation. Um, and then we set our reopening dates of May 19th for the doctor production side and May 26th for the hygiene production side. 
it was important to break this up in Alberta, especially because, you know, as we know, the, the doctor and the treatment side of the practice was able to come back a little bit quicker than hygiene. So it gave us a more accurate analysis of what was lost and the time that we have from now until the end of the year to recover. Uh, in here, we can enter any production that's been occurred during, since reopening. So since that May 19th date or since that May 26th date. But again, for the purposes of just making this accurate and follow along with the budget, we're gonna leave that blank for now. The next section in, in making it completely customizable to each practice is, We've got some pre-populated average hygiene appointment values and average doctor hourly production numbers. This is all clickable by selecting which province you're in. This data is taken from many practice analysis that we've done over the country and gives us an average of what those appointment values and doctor hourly productions are in each province. But they're also customizable. So if you're working with someone like Mohammed who can give you real analytics on your practice, you can enter in your actual numbers here which gives it that much more of a clearer picture, okay? So what we wanna do first is we wanna analyze our schedule prior to shutdown. So what we did was we entered in, you know, the hygiene visits that were available each day in the week. So, you know, for the average practice, there's normally two hygienists, so about seven visits a day are open. In this hypothetical situation, we'll say there was only one hygienist in on the Fridays. On the doctor's side, we said that we had a doctor in Monday to Thursday, eight hours a day. Um, in this particular office, the doctor took the Fridays off and it wasn't open weekends. So again, keeping in theme with our 650,000 lost, it's gonna build us a calculation of what our production loss was in dental and what our production loss was in hygiene. So we're pretty close to that $650,000 number, so we'll, we'll take it from there with this, with this analysis. When we click through, it's gonna remind us of the number that we're chasing here. Um, and we're gonna go through the recovery steps as well. So what the practitioner would do is enter in their contact information. I'll enter in mine just for speed sake here. And what it'll do is it's gonna end up emailing us our solution document. And the most important thing about that solution document, as Mohammed said, is it breaks down some simple things that we do on a day-to-day, week-to-week, month-to-month basis. And it's just a nice little reminder that as long as we execute these simple things, we'll not only get on back, back on track to recover that 650,000, but we may even end up exceeding it. So for this example, we said we have two hygiene rooms. Um, you can say that we had three doctor rooms, maybe two treatment and one overflow. Uh, for this particular example, we'll say we have no unequipped operatories. It'll ask us what our practice management software is. Dentrix, just hypothetically, and care crew for our patient communication platform. You can fill out any analysis up to this point until you have a Henry Shine account number. This is where it'll ask you to enter that in. And once you enter that in, you'll be allowed to get into the solution page of the document. If you're not familiar with what your Henry Shine account number is, please give us a call, either in Calgary, Edmonton, Vancouver branch, and they'll definitely be able to provide you this number. And, and just to just to kind of uh, make sure, this is a 100% free tool. Um, any office, all they need is just their customer ID and that's it. That's correct. You know, it was very important for us to uh, help, help clients monetize what that loss is and bring it to its most simplistic form because, you know, a lot of people that may not work with someone like yourself, Mohammed, it's very hard to analyze some of that lost revenue. Um, you can run production reports out of your software, but it's only as good as the information that gets inputted. So, you know, working with you obviously makes it a lot easier to analyze this number, but we wanted the tool to be as accurate as possible as well and give them something to chase. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, as I said, I love this. I mean, we can look at, you know, losses or production from a high level, right? But if you give, you know, somebody, a dentist say, you know, you need to come up with an extra 600,000. Well, how do you do that without really breaking that number down to, you know, a day, an off, a provider, uh, you know, changes to the schedule, changes to the hours. I mean, you cannot just take that number and say, yeah, you know what, I'm going to just going to work hard, right? I'm going to push the team, right, to get that going. I mean, you know, you, you need all these tools, all these um uh, you know, the team to, to join, but you need details. And I love, I love about this planner. It will show you the detail. 
Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. I think one thing COVID did do for every business owner is made them very aware that the analytics and tracking production and things within their business is more important than it's ever been and get a thumb on the pulse of exactly how your business is doing and little changes that you can make to make improvements. So again, we're gonna be reminded that this is the number that we're chasing based on our closure dates and our average hourly productions in both dental and hygiene. So now we're gonna step through some of our solution plans. So as you mentioned, Mom, the first section is schedule adjustments. So what we're gonna do in here is never before have so many practices had such a benefit of having such a backlog of appointments and patients wanting to come in. It's very important to take advantage of that. Uh, what I mean by that is, you know, you could have a backlog of hundreds of patients that have just been waiting to come in for their hygiene appointments, some treatment they hadn't had. So it's a great time to take advantage of that. If your office did not have short notice lists in the past, it's very important to build that out. Um, make sure that you're taking every step so that the second you have any type of hole in your schedule, you can take advantage of that. Um, another big reason that we can take advantage of that is adding hours to the schedule. So in this particular example, you know, if they have a healthy backlog of patients, you know, perhaps there's a conversation with the hygienist to come in, you know, that second hygienist for all day Friday. Uh, maybe we can get one of them to work Saturday and then we'll make sure that the doctor's there on Friday as well. Um, so as you can see, as I make adjustments to this, what it's gonna do is it's gonna take that multiplier of our average hourly production in both departments and it's gonna show us what sort of impact we have on our lost revenue. So for example, our hygiene adjustments, in our, our schedule adjustments, pardon me, in hygiene anticipate an extra 77 weekly visits, which is a change of 14 visits per week. So that impact to our hygiene production alone is already positive $67,760 by the end of the year. So breaking it down to its most simplistic form and just making a few schedule adjustments, we can see what a dent we put into that hygiene loss. On the doctor side, we anticipate an extra 40 weekly hours in doctor production, which is a change of eight hours per week. And that'll already cut into our doctor production loss by $132,000 by the end of the year. So again, just a few simple schedule changes, and we've already made an impact on our 643,000 lost revenue by just about $200,000. And we haven't looked into any procedures or any efficiencies other than just extending some hours for patients. I love it. So and, and, I know what you'll say, Mohammed is, hey, great point, Jamie. I'm open more. I'm going to make more. Hey, thanks. That's really rocket <laughs> science. That's awesome. So definitely you're right. Um, I think what we want to highlight in this section is just that efficiency. So prior to COVID, if our schedule was open for 14 hygiene visits a day, you know, were we really getting 14? Or did we have an hour here? Did we have an hour there? Um, you know, how are our cancellations? Were we getting two or three a day? If that's the case, then we can take steps and put procedures in place to make sure that we capitalize on the hours that we have staff there. So for example, I mentioned a short notice list. It's never been a better time than to ask every patient that comes in the door, hey, if I have an appointment coming up sooner, would you be interested in me contacting you to try to get you in? Um, I think you'll find people are extremely amicable to get back to the dentist. There was a lot of fear in March and April of what that would look like and how patients would feel comfort wise. But I know in my experience that, you know, patients see it as a safe environment. They want to get back. They want to get back to some sort of semblance of real life again. And uh, going back to the dentist and getting their hygiene appointment completed and feeling good about themselves is, is seems to be a real priority. So definitely make hay while the sun shines in the summer and, and try to get as many patients in and become as efficient as possible with your schedule. But, but, you, know, you know what I like about this is, you know what, you have 14 appointments, that should be the goal that is communicated in the office, right? If you have a hygiene coordinator, your hygiene team, you know, everybody should be working to say, okay, you know what, our goal is to fill 14 appointments each day, right? So that's one metric, one easy metric to monitor, right? And, and, the, and the impact is, is big, right? Just by monitoring that one metric. Well, it's huge, right? And, and what I love about this tool is, you know, we are going to be talking a lot of monetary, a lot about money, but, you know, we're, we also need to make sure that this goes hand in hand with patient care, right? The more hours that we have available to get people in to do what's right and make sure that their hygiene is done properly, make sure we get them out of pain in the dental department. I mean, again, money's money, but this all goes hand in hand with offering the best possible patient treatment, right? Perfect. So, 
So the next step then, Mohammed, is we go into procedure adjustments. So this is where we get a little bit more granular and there's a little bit more strategy here, uh, rather than just like I mentioned, opening extra hours. So what we're gonna do in the procedure adjustments is again, we're gonna select the province that we operate in. What that's gonna do is that's gonna pre-populate our most common fees that we see billed in every practice and the fee guide from the ADA&C 2020. So if your fees are different, again, these are completely customizable. We wanna make the most accurate picture possible for the practice to see what sort of uptick we'll do and what that will do to production by year end. So a couple of big things that we've noticed, you know, over the past five years doing these practice analysis reports is there's a lot of offices who will bill recall exams continuously year after year after year. Um, and, we, and we see definitely a lack in the bill of COEs or complete exams. So usually within a practice, there's a big uptick opportunity of billing those complete exams. They are covered by insurance plans, most insurance plans, I should say, every three to five years. So if we even just say a conservative number is we could do an extra, I don't know, 10 complete exams a week on our patient base, then we'll enter that in. Um, limited exams, I would say in Alberta that primarily dentists are very good at getting their limited and spec exams done. So just for the purposes of this exercise, I'm gonna leave those blank. Um, bite wings, there's usually an opportunity within practices to get a few bite wing images taken on patients that haven't had it within the past 12 months. So we'll use a conservative number and say maybe we can do eight per week. Uh, panoramic x-rays usually go hand in hand with complete exams. So I'm gonna enter the same number there as 10. Oral cancer screening, this is a conversation with each individual client, how they feel about that and what sort of offer they wanna to bring to their patients when it comes to oral cancer screening. So, you know, maybe we could say we're gonna to try to get two of those done per week. Uh, two, surface, two surface composite fillings, if there's an uptick there, opportunity, we could fill that in. Uh, crowns maybe, you know, there's an opportunity to get a couple crowns per week. Uh, root canals, I mean, we'll leave that blank for now, just for, for argument's sake. Implants, I mean, there's a, there's a big opportunity for people who have taken all sorts of continuing educational break. If you wanna incorporate some implants into your practice, I mean, we'll use a conservative number and say $3,500 per implant case. And let's say we, we really only think we can do about two a month. We'll enter in half of an implant case per week. Um, and then clear aligners, another great revenue generating opportunity. Um, a lot of patients are interested in getting clear aligners. So let's just say hypothetically, we can do one case per week. So that's in our doctor department. Now we're gonna go back into the hygiene department and we're gonna look at what sort of uptick we have here. So obviously we know from the CDA, C, CRDHA, pardon me, um, they, they're limiting what aerosols that uh, hygienists can use. They want them to use it only if needed. So, you know, polish could be something that we see maybe that's deferred for a little bit longer until, you know, phase three, four or five come down. And, uh, and we can relax those rules a little bit. Um, scaling is a great conversation right now. There's a, there's a blurb in the latest 2020 uh, ADA and C fee guide that talks about oral health instruction and talks about any added services that go along with what you're uh, billing to the patient. So for example, prior to COVID or 2019, um, a lot of offices would book an hour, hour and 15 minutes for a hygiene appointment. They would book their three units of scaling, so 45 minutes, and then they would book their polish and their fluoride. Well, in the 2020 ADA and C fee guide, they've actually allowed in a units of time section, it's section V1 or six in Roman numerals in the ADA and C fee guide, that mentions that any sort of oral health instruction or anything that you can benefit the patient in conjunction with the treatment you're providing is billable as a unit of time. So why that's important, Mohammed, is in certain cases where maybe we're deferring a polish or we might just decide we're gonna extend our hygiene appointment times until our staff get comfortable and patients get comfortable with our new workflow, we can actually bill longer time with the patient. So for example, if we extended our hygiene appointments from an hour to an hour and 15 minutes, we theoretically could bill four units of scaling in that hour and 15 minutes because we're educating the patient, we're making sure they know the importance of hygiene, total and systemic health in their body, et cetera, et cetera. As long as we're completing that and helping you know, educate people along with that, the ADA and C sees that as a billable code. So for a lot of offices, that could be a big uptick. Mm -hmm. 
and, so and, and example, would you recommend, for example, like, you know, offices that, and, and I'm, I'm just thinking about, you know, we, we have 14 appointments. Let's say an office cannot fill that 14 appointments with two hygienists. Would that be, you know, a kind of a strategy versus somebody who actually have no problem filling the, the 14, you know, appointments? Absolutely. Like, and, and the other thing that could be too is, is if you have patients coming in for their hygiene appointment and they're normally on every six month uh, recall, they may say to you, you know, for the time being, I'd rather just come in once a year. And that's fine. But then, you know, as a, as a hygiene provider, we need to make sure we're doing a thorough job, right? So taking a little bit more time and billing that extra unit of scaling, you know, could be easily covered under their benefit plan. We're not abusing that. We're not doing anything out of the norm and we're providing the best quality care. So another strategy there as well, Mohammed. Um, one metric that I know you provide to clients, which is huge, is the uh, average hygiene production per hour. And that's a great metric to use. If we see that starting to slip uh, compared to prior to COVID numbers, then there's a strategy there to extend appointment times and get an extra unit in there as well. So all a conversation piece, all what we would want to work on one-on-one -on -one with clients just to make sure that they're doing what they're comfortable with in their standard of care and maximizing what they can do on the production side at the same time. So okay. just for hypothetical, let's say we're going to do about uh, 10, oh, sorry, pardon me. we're going to do about 10 extra units of scaling per week. So we'll divide it in half because we're only going to do 15 minutes. So we'll say five. Um, fluoride, you know, there, there's certainly clients who, you know, have gotten away from recommending fluoride. There could be an opportunity of doing that. Uh, we know fluoride uptick with the varnish is probably the best way to do things moving forward. Um, if you've been waiting to come up with that perio plan or that strategy within the practice, it's a good idea to look at that. So maybe we can get an extra 15 units of root planing in our practice, um, et cetera, et cetera. But again, the, the beauty of this, Mohammed, is we want to make sure this is a customized plan that each doctor is comfortable with, because the more comfortable they are with it, the easier it'll execute. Absolutely. Okay. So we can see what we've done is we're still chasing that $443,000. That was what was left after our schedule adjustment portion. Now with our procedure adjustment portion, we've actually upped $286,792 as a production boost just in our procedure adjustments alone. Okay. Jamie, you still owe me 157. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> right? And we can, we can absolutely do that. I mean, you know, the, the, the way that we're operating right now is, you know, people are still getting comfortable with the BPE, the new processes, making sure that we're pre-screening patients, taking a little bit more time. But you guys, you can see that this is very conservative, right? So we are very conservatively saying that, you know, we can do 10 complete exams and panoramic x-rays per week. We can do an extra eight bite wings. Uh, we're going to do two oral cancer screening. I mean, I think this is a very conservative estimate. And the thing that I love about this tool is we can go back and adjust this. So Absolutely. for example, that, that units of time conversation, if a client said, you know, definitely I've got 14 appointments per day. So minimum 10 of those appointments per day, I could probably take advantage of that. That's 10 times five, that's 50 appointments. So we're going to go 25 there. Um, we can say, yeah, fluoride, that's a little conservative. Let's say we can easily get 10 more per week. Uh, our root cleaning department can do a little bit better. Um, and, you know, I was being very conservative on that clear liner case. I do think that maybe I could do two a month or two a week, pardon me. So now we can see the impact there, right? So the beauty of this, Mohammed, is, again, like I mentioned, completely customizable free to any client that wants to use it and play around with different scenarios and see what's executable for them. In their practice. That, that's, that's really awesome. I mean, you know, you know, Jamie, here, here, I love this tool because as you said, like we can, you know, look at, you know, the production loss, we can take that production loss, take it down, you know, into the procedure, into the schedule, figure out, okay, now for me to recover that amount, I need to do these things, right? And, and, and I feel that this is all the easy part, you know, just kind of trying to figure out what's going on. The hard part is to take all this information, okay, 
and look at your standard of care. Do maybe a chart audit, figure out what you need to do with the team and, and, and work with the team that you have to say, okay, here is what we, are, what we need to do as an office to make sure that we are you know, serving the patient, making sure our you know, standard of care is, 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 you know, exceeds what, what we want it to do, right? And, and, and you can kind of look at that you know, and, and translate that into, into numbers, into um, you know, appointments. I, I, I really like this. I really like it so much. Yeah, it's been good. And, you know, over the past five years, this just works in such good conjunction with the practice analysis tool that we have as well. Uh, for those not familiar with that, what we do is we get the clinic and, and the practitioner to set a baseline standard of care. So we never ask them to do something that's out of the ordinary, something they're not comfortable with, something that's, you know, not conservative according to them. And then we show them the analytics on where things are falling short on that standard of care. So the beauty of that is it's all a financial uptick opportunity, but it's also hand in hand with what's best for the patient, according to that particular practitioner. That's super important to us because as we know, there could be somebody who believes that a patient should come in every three months for hygiene. There could be somebody that says, you know, a lot of my patients could only benefit once a year, once every two years. That's up to the practitioner. That's not up to you or I to make that decision mom, right? So all we wanna do is get them comfortable with what they'd like to see in their practice, show them the shortfalls, and then work on the opportunity to capture that. Patient. So, so Jamie, um, I, I, as I said, I, I really like numbers. I like this. It, it gives people, you know, measurable, actionable, you know, steps. So any tips on the implementation? I mean, you know, I'm, I'm sure you hear this all the time. Um, you know, the dentists have a plan, what they wanna do. They go back to their team and, and there's so much pushback, right? Any tips on, you know, the implementation, the buy-in? Absolutely. So the team is number one. Nothing happens in the practice without buy-in from the team. I think we can all agree on that. Um, and then the captain of the team is very important too, because addressing this at the beginning, coming back after COVID and then not, not talking about it for months on end and expecting something to change I mean, that's the definition of madness, right? So my, my suggestion would be involve your team, right? Set a base standard of care that you would like executed on every patient that comes into your clinic and get team buy-in on that. Involve the hygiene department, involve your dental assistants, involve your front end team. It's super important for everybody to be rowing the boat in the same direction and truly buy in to what you're trying to execute. Um, all it takes is one person to not agree with how you're treatment planning or how often you want to bring it in for scaling and recall, and the whole thing can go down in flames. So it's super important to make sure that everybody's on board with what you're trying to do and pushing in the same direction. When you have that team buy-in, it is incredible at how efficient and amazing a job that each practice can do. Um, we can help with that. I mean, we, we've done coaching seminars. We've done uh, total health and systemic health seminars for the staff. The beauty is, is sometimes it's not the dentist having to just hammer home that message, right, and continuously getting feedback. Um, what we can do is we can help with that. So, you know, as long as we have a coach from the doctor to say, you know, these guys know what they're talking about. They can help us out. We can come in. We can do a seminar. Everything we talk about and teach is facts. It's fact-based. It's healthcare-based. It's something that likely every healthcare dental professional has already learned. It's just almost a refresher course. And it helps just get everybody on the same page when it comes to what we're trying to do and what we're trying to execute on every patient. That's number one. The idiosyncrasies of billing and how to handle this and whatever, I mean, that comes easy once you have buy-in. When there's buy-in from the team, they're going to make sure that there isn't a patient that leaves without their next recall appointment booked. There's a short notice list ready to get people in the second there's a cancellation. Uh, we're doing what's best for the patient. We're doing what's best for the team. You're going to have a great environment for people to come into work, be happy and healthy every day. It's, it can be really, really cool. That's awesome. Uh, fantastic. This is, this is really, as I said, you know, a, another tool uh, that really helps people you know, prosper. Um, what I'm going to do, Jamie, I'm, uh, I will be linking uh, the, the planner and other uh, COVID resources uh, at the end of this video. Uh, if somebody wants to get in touch with you, say hi, uh, what is the best way to uh, reach you? 
absolutely. You know, text, email, uh, phone call, always available. Um, at our at our Henry Shine Edmonton branch, as you guys know, we have 11 reps that that all take care of people from Red Deer North. Uh, our Calgary branch has, I think, 12 or 13 that does Red Deer South, and then you know Vancouver has has a lot of us as well. So please get in touch with with either the branch managers or the branches in each location or your individual Henry Shine rep. Um, we're all really excited trying to help recover from from COVID. And uh, yeah, we're looking forward to chatting with you guys and running through this exercise. But as Mohammed said, he'll send out the link. Feel free to run through it yourselves. Um, if you need help or you want some different suggestions, I said contact your Henry Shine rep and uh, we're happy to help. Them. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. Great. Thanks, Mohammed. Appreciate it.